Man. After Hurricane Harvey struck the Gulf Coast of Texas, thousands of acres of ranch land was submerged below several feet of water, stranding thousands of cattle on islands of higher ground. Within days of the disaster, the local sheriff's office began using their Huey helicopter to respond to calls from the ranchers who were unable to reach their livestock. And grit and hay billowed into the faces of roughly two dozen Texans and Utah National Guard soldiers as two Ohio National Guard CH-47 Chinook helicopters touchdown in the parking lot of Hampshire Fannett High School in Jefferson County, Texas on September 7th. As the dust settled, trucks with trailers full of hay moved forward and within moments a flurry of work moved bale after bale of hay into the cargo hold of the transport helicopters. Directing it all from the middle of the bucket line of haystackers was Chief Warrant Officer Zach Cohen from the 149th Aviation Regiment, Texas National Guard. In rural southeastern Texas, a big part of that is the cattle industry. And in this area, thousands of cows remain stranded, trapped by flooding without access to feed. As hurricane disaster cleanup efforts continue, National Guard units from multiple states have teamed up to deliver hay via CH-47 Chinook helicopters to the affected areas. 10,000 cattle over 50,000 acres in Jefferson County and the surrounding counties. And it's about a $25 million impact on the line if these cows die. Here in the state of Texas, cattle is king. There's $25 million worth of cows throughout the state that have been hit by Hurricane Harvey, and these animals are stranded. They don't have access to good food or good nutrition. You know, the farmers on the ground say, you know, I'm at this location, my cattle are at this location. They're at the corner of this road and this road. We put all these coordinates on a map and gridded that map out and we go, okay, fly, grid, alpha, or delta. And what we did was we gridded this whole five county region off like that and we dumped hay on all the cattle that we could see that were isolated and unable to get reached by, by a brown vehicle. From Beaumont, Texas, I'm Army Sergeant Tim Beery. Cohen explained that the operation was a government mandated effort to restore $25 million worth of rancher industry investment and protect Texan livelihood. Cohen added, it is not just the ranchers, it's the truckers that carry the cattle and feed. It's the veterinarians that take care of the cattle's medical needs. Nationally, this is where a lot of meat comes from, and it has the potential to raise the price of beef nationwide. I think it's a great thing. I mean, we can come together, I mean, in times of crisis and, and national disasters like this uh, to really help out and make sure we get, I mean, we provide a unique capability to move lots of material, equipment, and security uh, assets to areas that have been devastated by natural disasters such as this. Lieutenant Tony Vietor with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department said, we found a tremendous number of cattle stranded in areas that were inaccessible and wouldn't be accessible for quite some time in Jefferson and nearby counties. local ranchers came to pitch in, moving bales of hay onto the trailers and into the helicopter. These guys aren't getting paid to be here, said Cohen. They're here because they know it needs doing for their community and we're thankful for all of their help. Above the flood pastures, the Chinook hovered just feet above the ground. The crew rationed out enough feed for each group of cattle to last a few days until water recedes and ranchers can reach their livestock.
By the end of the four-day mission, crews flew more than 20 flights, providing food for more than 10,000 cows. The brutal winter of 1949 was more extreme than most, as several large blizzards and dangerously low temperatures cut off livestock from food and shelter in the western part of the state. Responding to the crisis, Governor Fred Ondahl activated the North Dakota Air National Guard's 178th Fighter Squadron for Operation Haylift on February 3rd, 1949. It was one of their worst winters that they'd had in that whole western part of the state and so many cattle were, were lost and a lot of them were, couldn't get the feed and it, they really saved a lot, of, a lot of herds of cattle because they were kind of bunched up so yeah. it wasn't too, too hard to drop them close by so they could get some feed. Uh, but it was quite a uh, operation and the hay was hauled into Minot base there and then loaded on the 47th and then they had orders where to deliver it and so on. They'd do their missions and then in the evening we'd bring back because it was cold, we had to get them inside overnight. So uh, it, was, it was a good operation. They were, I think they were doing it for about probably three weeks at least, yeah, weren't they? It was quite a while. Quite a while that they flew a lot of missions. To get the doors open, they, you know, you'd have to have the doors open well, on your They had the doors open flying, you know. The guys that were handling the bales in the airplane, we had ropes around their waist and tied to the inside the airplane so they wouldn't, if they should happen to slip, well, we had a rope around them. But they saved a lot of cattle. Operation Haylift was the first of many successful disaster relief operations for the North Dakota Air National Guard. This legacy of service to the state and its communities is a hallmark of the happy hooligans to this day. Reporting for Hooligan TV News, this is Tech Sergeant Mike Canodal.